I'm back. But that doesn't matter right now because that's not what this video is about. So, um, and I also probably will make a video saying I'm back because that's kind of stupid and edgy. So, all that matters is I'm back and I'm redoing my channel. <laughs> but it's still going to be a Roblox channel and it's still going to be GFX stuff because I finally got back into GFX because I had no Robux. <laughs> so, anyways, um, my, I'm keeping it up, but my tutorial on how to render Roblox characters is very outdated now because nobody uses R12 anymore. I don't even use it anymore, and I swore to myself I was sticking to it for the rest of my life. And the only reason I stuck to it, I'm, the only reason I changed is because I upgraded to Catalina and I can only use R21 with Catalina, so that's really cool, right? So, um, uh, this tutorial is hopefully going to be better and more thorough and like I said, more up to date and um, it's going to be on how to use a rig instead of bones because I use a rig now. Uh, if you use bones, just watch my last tutorial. I mean, it's the bones are the same with R21, so like <laughs> that's not going to affect it if you're using a newer version of Cinema 4D. So, um, let's get into this. Oh. So, uh, first, you need to get your Roblox character, which, you know, there's a few ways to do that, but pretty sure all of them require Roblox Studio. So, go into Roblox Studio. Gotta wait for that to open. Just ignore that, because I don't care. And then make a base plate. Well, it doesn't really matter. If it's a base plate or what, it's easier. Well, it's not even easier. You just, it doesn't matter. Okay. And you need a plugin for this. So it's um, Load Character by Already Pro. I'll link it in the description, probably. I, I can't make any promises because I don't know if I'm even going to be able to find it. So, but yeah. So you click that and then make sure you do Spawn at Origin. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter that much, but it makes things a lot easier. So. And then enter the username of the character you want. Um, I guess I'm just gonna do my own. Um, that's not what my character looks like. Okay, sure. And then R6, don't do R15 because that won't work with the rig, I think. I don't know. Um, please ignore how edgy I am. So now you have your character and now you can add, like you can change the hats and the face and stuff like that. Like if you wanted, okay, see so like, if you want to add a hat that you don't own or whatever or the person doesn't have on, just go in models and look at the hat. So like, I don't know, the, the black and red hair. Look up black and red. And when you add a hat, you want to make sure that when you enter, when you add it in, it either has this little like wizard hat icon or it has this like, it has like a top hat icon because it makes it a lot easier because if you just drag it into your player it immediately like goes on properly instead of you having to place it on there because like it's really annoying if you have to put it on if you want to change the clothes um it's really annoying <laughs> but i'm not going to make an in-depth tutorial on this but you just have to click on the shirt and the pants and and shirt template you change this id thing here um you have to get the asset id and not just the id of the actual shirt um, if you don't know how to do that, look it up, because I'm not going to do the tutorial on that, because it's annoying. So, let's say you do that, and the face is just, um, you go into images, and you look up the face that you want, so like, yum face, that's, <laughs> make sure you look up this instead, and then you just drag it on, and sometimes, okay, you want to make sure that the, that it looks like the face on the catalog, um, if you hear things in the background, I don't know if you can, that's my cat. Uh, don't, it, it can't be this big, and it, some, some of these might have a white background, you want to get a transparent one, obviously. But yeah, if you're doing the yum face, this one is, this one works, so. Cool. It's easier to tell if it has a, doesn't have a white background if you go down here and change background to none, and you can see it has a white background or not. So, that's that. If you want it to hold something, it's probably what you would normally do like what you if I hadn't told you you probably would have gone into models and looked up what you wanted it to hold so um, then you want to right click this thing that has the username export selection 
I'm out of breath. <laughs> I have trouble talking. Um, go into whatever folder you want to save it in. I have like a dedicated folder. And just title it as whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to do tutorial. I spelled that wrong, but that doesn't matter. And then you want to open um, Cinema 4D. So right here. I'm gonna have to cut this out of the video. It might take a little bit to open, which is annoying as hell, but okay. Okay, then if you're using R21, you get this thing. Um, just open the Lightroom you're using. I'm going to link a different Lightroom from the one that I use. Um, it's not that great of a Lightroom, but it's free. So it's something. I use a free one too, but I don't know where to get it because my friend gave it to me. So <laughs> sorry. Um, it shouldn't be that complicated. Okay. So this one automatically comes with bones in it. We're not using those, so just delete. And then I always delete the camera because I don't need it because I'm not animating right now. So um, there you go. That's the, Those are the lights. So um, <laughs> I, I'm not really sure if I should show you how to download the rig or not. It's not that hard, so I guess I will. So, um, you want to go to Preferences on Cinema 4D, wherever it is. This is where it is on Mac. It, it's probably, I think it's somewhere different on Windows, but it shouldn't be that hard to find. Go to Preferences. Download the, well, <laughs> I'll link the rig in the description. You got, you have to download, um, the rig file. So, um, it's a lib4d file. So then go to open preferences folder. And then library, browser, and then you just drag the lib4d file into here and then restart Cinema 4D and then you'll have it. So then once you've done that, go to content browser over on the side here and find the, the rig file and this thing Double click that and open it. Um, I don't know if it's the same with every Lightroom, but with this one at least, the rig is backwards, so just rotate it 180 degrees. It's, you know, pretty simple. But I don't know if it's the same with every um, Lightroom. And then, once you have this rig, this, go down here with this Soldier 1 thing. Delete that. Delete that, thank you. Because you don't need that. And there's this change texture here material. That's, you do what it says. You change the texture to the texture that your um, character comes with. You just have to pretend that you imported your entire character and this is it. Except you don't do that. This is going to be the body. So um, then go into where you saved your uh, model at and the, the texture will be there. It should be... Oh dear, I have a lot of hats on, so this is going to be really annoying. Okay, so um, with my character, because I had, I don't know what hat this is supposed to be, but okay. Um, it, it's called my username 2text. It'll probably be one text for you, but whatever it is, it'll look like this for the body. That's what it'll look like. So open, no, and then change the sampling to SAT, and then editor... Change it to no scaling. It doesn't affect the render, but if you put it on default, it looks like crap, so. Yeah. Now, open up the rig, go into attachments, head attachments, and delete that. And now you have this. Merge project. Now you merge the OBJ. That's tutorial, right? Yeah. Um, and then the settings are important. So scale, 100. Fong angle, zero um untick invert transparency and then untick this and tick that and then there you go this is also backwards so rotate that 180. now you have that um go in here and then i just kind of click through all of these to <laughs> find which one are the hat which ones are the hats you have to keep the hats but everything else you want to delete so get the hats and then delete the entire body and just have the hats and why are they still backwards i do not know oh wait no they're not i forgot i had a mask on 
Okay. Now, you drag the texture onto the hats. Just like that. And if, okay. If the texture ends up, if a hat ends up like this, that means that you need to... Let me delete that. Take this texture, um, copy control C, control V, or command, and then change the texture to, it is that, um, Hypnos 1 1. This one, you'll probably be able to tell which hat it's for. This is a black halo, so that's kind of obvious. Do that, click no, and then drag that onto the hat, and then there you go, now it's got the right texture on it. And then do that for the rest of the hats. This is the last one. So there. Now you have a proper character. And what's nice about rigs is you don't have to bind bones, you don't have to subdivide, you don't have to do any of that. It's ready for moving now. I'm just gonna do that with the lights so they don't get in the way. So now, all of these lines... All of these lines correspond to a certain part of the body. It's kind of obvious which one they correspond to. <laughs> so it's it's pretty much the same as bones. It's just that the bones are, like, you don't go over and select a bone from here and move it. You just select the thing. Um, so if you want to... Oh, yeah. And this part right here, this, like, weird triangle thing, just moves the entire rig. So. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I'm so dumb. I forgot to mention. <clears throat> With these hats... Select them, open the rig, in attachments, head attachments, drag them into head attachments, and then they'll move with it, like that. So, that just moves the entire rig. So, it's obvious what these change, that's the what, oh I selected the hat. It's kind of hard to select these sometimes, depending on where they are. So that changes the head. Oh, since this is on the head attachments, it'll move with the head, but you don't really want it to, so it's better... Let's see. I guess this would be better... It's kind of hard, because, like... Okay. You probably want to put it on one of these. I've never done a render with this before, so I actually don't know what you would want to put this on. Probably on a leg one, but on a leg attachment. But like if you just put it on one singular leg attachment, if I move that leg, it'll move with it. So it's kind of weird. So I don't know. You might not even want to attach it to anything and just you'll move it like where the thing moves. <laughs> does that make sense? I, I really hope it does. So I'll just put that back in there for now so it doesn't move with the like head and stuff. So that doesn't have to be attached if you have that, but like you probably won't, so yeah. So these move the arms. Obviously. That's kinda obvious. These bend the arms. These move the legs, that moves the torso. And you can really go wild with how you move the torso. So that's cool. So I'm just gonna make like a really quick, simple pose. Okay, there's our pose. And now, you gotta, sometimes you have to fix the lighting. It's, if you want a more dynamic render, and you don't want it to just be the same every time, you should fix the lighting. Or not even fix it, just change it a little bit. Like, change the angle of the lighting or the color of it. I change the color of it a lot, because I think it looks cool. If I add, like, okay. There's different kinds of lights, they're all pretty similar. When I do this, I usually do the infinite light. Um, so I like to do a light that's shining onto the side of the character in like a neon color because I don't know, it looks cool, I guess. Um, this light is not cooperating with me right now. So just make it face there. And then go into the light settings in general and change it to the color that you want. So I'm just going to do like bright red. And sometimes it's kind of hard to get it to like shine on it a lot, especially with this kind of light. If you want it to shine on it more, you might be better with... You can change the type of the light right here. Like a spotlight. 
possibly? Or an area light? But I'm just gonna stick with this. Um, so see, you can kind of see the shine right there. And then sometimes, depending- if I know what color, I'm gonna make the background of the thing. I I add- okay. Doesn't matter what kind of light you do with this, just grab a light and change it to a very light version of the color that you're gonna use. Say we're doing black, I'll just do like a pink. And then right here, take ambient uh, illumination and lower the intensity a lot, and then it just kind of gives like a, a glow of the background, so it kind of looks like they're actually in the background, because like, if there's a light and it reflects on a color, the color is going to reflect onto the object very slightly. So like if you're in front of a bright red screen and there's lights, you're going to have a very slight red glow. That's how physics works. So if you want it more realistic, you can do that. And then um, you can do a preview render right here. Might take a bit. Okay, that's exactly what it'll look like when it's finished rendering. It's kind of hard to tell, this is actually probably a bad character to choose, but I just wanted to make this easy, so... Um, if, it, if they've got solid black clothes on, the background, it comes out transparent when you actually render it, but just like, the preview background is black, so you can't really see the shadows or anything, but like... Looks good, right? It looks smooth. That's the thing, it looks really... rigs look very smooth and realistic. Which is pretty cool. So, once you want to actually like render it and have it saved as a picture, first go up to this gear icon and then save. You should usually leave the rest of the settings how they are because that comes with the Lightroom. So, save, file, and then these three dots and then you just name it whatever. I'm just going to name it tutorial in whatever folder you want it to be in. And then that's good. And um, <clears throat> sometimes. The render comes out kind of like grainy, and if you want to fix that, you want to change the render to physical, and then you want to go into physical, and change the, s the sampling quality to like, if you change it to high, it'll take like hours to render, but it does fix the graininess. Medium is probably better, and then you can also add effects denoiser. And when you add that, it'll do like, after it finishes rendering, it'll denoise it, so there's a little less graininess. It doesn't fix it perfectly, but it's a lot better than, you know, if you didn't do that. Sometimes it gets greeny, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why, but yeah, I'm not an expert, but that's how you fix it if that happens. So you exit that out and then you click this and then it starts rendering it like, you know, for good. And it'll come out as a transparent image in whatever folder that you saved it as. And then you can edit it. So like you can put it into Photoshop or whatever editing program you use and it'll already be transparent and you'll have your render. So that's how you use a rig. That's how I render. Yep. <laughs> I don't know if that was a better tutorial than the first one I did, but it's more up to date and I think I might sound less like a five-year-old. I might sound more like a five-year-old. I don't really know, but um, that's, yeah. So I swear I'm not five, okay? <laughs> I'm in high school, thanks. Okay, so um, it's almost done rendering. Sometimes it takes, depending on, okay, depending on what you have in the render, it might take a long time to render. If you have like a scene in the background that's like part of the render, it might take a long time. So, but with like a simple character render like this, unless you change the sampling, it shouldn't be too much time. Like it, for me, it usually takes 20 seconds to like a minute. So that's not that bad. If you have like a kind of bad PC, it might take a while, but... I mean, I have okay, I have a I have a 2015 iMac if that helps. <laughs> so that's how fast it renders. It looks kind of bad quality in the picture viewer, but once you actually put it in Photoshop, it's it's like good quality. Yeah. So, by the way, I made this shirt. You should buy it. Um. Anyways, <laughs> that's my tutorial. That's all I'm gonna do for this because this isn't an editing tutorial. It's a rendering tutorial, and it's already kind of a long tutorial. So, cool. Thank you for watching, and I hope, well, if anyone watched, I think a lot of my subscribers are probably really inactive now, but I hope someone watched. So, thank you if you did, and I really do hope this helped. You can comment any questions you have, but I'm not smart, so I probably won't be able to answer a lot of them. <laughs> so, don't expect me to answer every single question properly, because I'm...
small brain. So yeah, thanks for watching.